Alright guys, welcome back. So this is what we had at the end of the last episode, just a little spaceship hovering through space like that. You can turn around and you'll just kind of float forever like that. Um, what we're going to do in this episode is make it so our spaceship can actually shoot stuff, so that'll be fun. Um, one other change we're going to make, because it's just a small game feel kind of change, is that uh, at the moment you can see our spaceship will literally just float forever, right? It has no friction or anything like that and you will just fly through space forever, as I guess you probably would in space, I don't know. But uh, just for the sake of a slightly improved game feel, I think when you're not, when you floating in a direction like this, I'm going to add a very, 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 very tiny amount of friction to the spaceship, so over time he will eventually kind of grind to a halt. Um, just as a sort of thing that doesn't leave you just like floating forever like that, as that can become a little bit unmanageable to control, and it like, it just, it feels a little bit more intuitive if eventually you do kind of like slow down. It's going to be very subtle, but we're going to put it in anyway. So, if you remember how events work, if we've got the obj underscore player open here, just by double clicking on him, have this open, we have our left and right uh, key events which turns left and right, the up key event which moves us forward, and the outside room event that wraps us around. Uh, we're going to add a new event to this little pile, um, it's a very important um, special event called uh, the step event. Right, there's three of them, there's a the step, begin step, and end step. No need to worry about these two for now, I have another video on those if you want to know more about them. Uh, but for now, we'll just go ahead and click the step event, that's the event we're after. So the step event happens every single frame of your game, okay? So you know already, because our settings in our room, um, the speed of the room is set to 60, that's our target frame rate, so at 60 FPS, um, anything in step events, oh, need to add it again now, <laughs> Uh, will happen once every single one of those uh, 60 frames. So 60 times in a second this event is going to trigger. Alright, that's the easiest way to think of it for now. So what we're going to do in the step event is we're just going to make it so that the player object slows down over time if its speed is in any way greater than zero. So go ahead and drag in the, the action we generally use for everything, which is in control of the little, little bit of paper that says execute code. Execute a piece of code, brings up the code editor again. And what we're going to do in this is we're going to just change our speed to be um, a different number. I'm going to say speed equals, right? And now I'm going to say speed equals max, open bracket, and you see that's turned yellow because it's a function, speed minus 0.01, comma, 0. Okay? Now, what does max do? What does this function max do? Max uh, returns the biggest number out of any values that you put into the bracket separated with commas. Like you can put loads in, in here. I could put like a bunch more values if I wanted. But we we're picking between these two values, and Max will return whichever one of them uh, computes as being bigger, being the biggest. Okay. So that can either be our speed subtract with 0 0.01 subtracted from it. So let's say our speed was currently 5 in any given direction, like our total total speed of this object was 5 pixels a frame. Um, this function here would either return 4.99 or 0, depending which one of those numbers is bigger. And obviously 4.99 is bigger, so um, it's going to give us that one. Uh, the reason we're doing this is so that, say, our speed was 0, right? Um, speed minus 0 0.01 would be negative 0 0.01, which would be smaller than 0, so it would return 0. Basically, all this does is clamps our speed above 0, so it makes uh, 0 the minimum value that our speed will ever drop to, while reducing it by 0 0.01 every single time this line goes off. So it's like saying speed equals speed minus 0 0.01, like itself minus 0 0.01. But if that value would be less than 0, then it's just going to give us 0 instead. All right. So we can close that now. And if I... Oop, didn't mean to click that one. If I click OK and I run the game now. So here we have our spaceship again. And if I just, like, start moving you'll see the spaceship slowly kind of grinds to a halt. So like, if I just set my speed and I do our usual thing, so I'm just kind of twirling through space now, you can see I'm slowing down, very subtle, just slowly over time to a halt like that. 
Now, it's useful just to kind of have that, just because our player doesn't really have any way of moving backwards or controlling thrust in any direction other than moving forwards, which is just kind of part of the challenge of the game, but also just makes it give you just that little bit of extra help, like coming to a stop and moving in a certain direction without having to sort of turn the other way and thrust that, like thrust the other way to like, like stop or whatever. I mean, obviously you need to do that if you want to make a sudden change in direction, but it does allow you to just slowly like sort of drift while like still shooting at something into a certain, certain spot. Alright, so that's that. Now the next thing we're going to do is make our spaceship actually able to shoot stuff. So first of all we need um, a new sprite and a new object uh, for the bullets that we're going to shoot out, okay? So in sprites over at the top I'm going to right click up here, I'm going to click insert sprite. And this sprite I'm just going to call SPR underscore bullet, just similarly to how we named our player, SPR underscore player. I'm going to click edit sprite, I'm going to click create a new sprite, and here where it says width and height, instead of leaving it at 32 by 32, I'm just going to make this uh, 4 by 4, make it really small, okay, just a tiny little square. Now that that's appeared, I'm going to double click that to bring up the image editor, zoom right in, just to so that you can see, really, you don't need to, I guess. Uh, click the fill tool, and I'm just going to right click, because white is already selected there, and then click, and then we just have a tiny little white square. Still important that we remember to click center on the origin here, so that the origin can just time just about see the little cross move into the center. Our origin should be two and two, so that it's centered on the the bullet. Now in objects, I'm going to right click on objects and hit create object. Make a new object called obj underscore bullet. Okay, so it's just same same as before. Like we have spr player and obj underscore player. Now we've got spr underscore bullet and obj underscore bullet. And the sprite, I'm going to assign it to SPR and score bullet, like that. And uh, the only actual event and action we're going to put in here is make it so that when the bullets um, leave the room, we get rid of them, okay? So in events here, uh, click add event. Um, and in the other section, little diamond says other, outside room, top one, okay? So whenever this object leaves the room. Now if we go to main one tab over here, there's a little uh, bin bin icon that just says destroy instance. You just go ahead and drag that in, applies to self, click OK. So now whenever this object is outside of the room, it'll just get instantly destroyed. Now in the original asteroids, those bullets actually they wrapped around and you could do that if you wanted to, just in the same way we did it with our player object, using the wrap, uh, wrap command instead. Uh, but I'm just going to make it um, so that the bullets get destroyed when they go outside the room, just to keep it nice and simple. Um, if you want to know how to do that without just using a drag and drop option. Um, if I get rid of that now and just drag in the code editor, you can simply write instance underscore destroy. Open bracket, close bracket, because there's no arguments needed for this uh, particular function. And a semicolon, and that will do exactly the same thing. Okay, so if I click that now, that, that piece of code, that one line, does exactly the same thing as just dragging in this destroy the instance. There is no difference whatsoever between those two things. It's just a different way of doing it. Um, if you're more comfortable keeping everything in code, then you can use that. Otherwise, it's kind of handy to just save yourself some time and drag in the little drag and drop option. But we'll leave that as is, because as I said, there's, there's really no difference. Now, we don't actually need to do anything else in the bullet object for now in order to make it shoot, okay? Uh, we're going to do all of that from the player object. The player object is going to generate this bullet and is going to give it a speed in the direction that the player is facing. So go ahead and click OK on OBJ underscore bullet. We don't need to place it anywhere in the room either because we're going to dynamically create OBJ underscore bullet from our spaceship object, okay? So double click your player object, open that back up. Go ahead in the event section, add a new event. And this time we're going to say uh, key press uh, space. Now it's important actually that you pick from the key press section this time. Previously we've just been using keyboard because we only we want the event to trigger whenever that key is being held down. But now we only want to trigger this event on the first frame that we press space. We don't want to be able to just hold space and like uh, shoot an infinite stream of bullets one every frame because then it would be like just a line of <laughs> it'd be like generating a big line of bullets as opposed to like you know um, like a bullet uh, one bullet at a time. So we can use key, press, and space for this one, okay? And you can see it's different because instead of just saying the name of the key in the, uh, the, the sharp brackets, it just says press beforehand, and it says press and then in the brackets, space, okay? 
So this is the event we're going to use. So go ahead into the control section and drag in the code editor again. Brings up the lovely code editor. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create our bullet. So just as we used our instance destroy earlier to destroy the bullet object if it goes outside the room, here we're going to use instance underscore create to actually create an instance of an object. I should explain that GameMaker, like, the word instance refers to a specific instance of an object, okay? Because your object is the, the base, um, like the base of your object, you know? It's the, um, it's like the root of it. And it's where, um, like, your player and your bullet gets all of its instructions from the original object. But each uh, one of those objects in your room is a specific instance of that object, okay? That's just sort of how GameMaker's, uh... Uh, terminology works, I guess. <laughs> so instance create open bracket because like this is a yellow function, so we need to give it some uh, give it some arguments. Now you can see right at the bottom of the screen, uh, it comes up saying instance create x comma y comma object. So we need to provide the x coordinate, the y coordinate, um, and the object that we actually want to create. Okay, so we need to give it a position on the screen and uh, the name of the type of object that we want to create. Now the X and Y are easy, they're just going to be X and Y. We're just going to create the bullet wherever our player currently is, okay? So wherever the origin of our uh, player object is, that's where we're going to create this bullet, so dead in the center. Um, and the object is going to be obj underscore bullet. Alright, simple. So right now, um, when, whenever we press the space key, we execute this line of code that just says instance underscore create x y obj underscore bullet just makes a bullet yeah so go ahead close that click OK and let's run the game and see exactly what happens now when we press space so I'm going to fly along a little bit and I'm going to start to press space you can see I'm making these little dots wherever I go now yeah now obviously the problem is they're not shooting anywhere and that's what we're going to do next so now that we know how to actually make an object how do we make that object move well, open up your player object again, go back to that event, press space, and double click uh, the action again to bring back up the code editor. Now, um, instead of just writing instance underscore create here for this bullet, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something on the beginning and say bullet equals instance create x, y, obj underscore bullet. Every instance you create in your room, every instance of an object has a specific ID. And it's like a long, like six digit number or something like that. It's just like a, a unique number that identifies that specific instance of an object. Now, unless you know exactly what that instance ID happens to be at any given time, um, it can be hard to reference that object and like that, that instance even and do specific things to it. But we can easily track that ID by um, assigning the ID uh, of the instance we've just made to a variable as we create it. By saying, by creating a variable name and saying that equals uh, the result of this function, instance underscore create x y obj underscore bullet, it's going to do that, it's going to make the bullet, and it's going to store the instance's ID inside of this variable, meaning we can use this variable to do things to that one specific bullet. Because at the moment, if we tried to change things inside of uh, obj underscore bullet, it would affect every bullet and not just the one we've just made. So now that we know we, uh, the bullet we've just made, um, we can go ahead and uh, set up variables inside that bullet just by using bullet dot. Okay, so just by putting bullet and then dot, we can actually write stuff here, like if I said bullet dot x equals um, 5, for example, that's going to change the x coordinate of our bullet. Whereas obviously if I just wrote x equal 5, that's going to change the x coordinate of our player object, because this is the, the object in which this code is uh, running. So we're going to take bullet, the, the, uh, the ID of the, uh, the bullet that we've just created, and what we're going to do is we're going to set its direction to equal uh, our player's current image underscore angle. As you remember, image angle is the um, is the the image direction that our uh, our player currently has. So it's the direction that it's pointing, all right, between zero and three hundred and sixty. So it's going to face the right way. Um, and then we may as well set the image angle of the 
bullet itself, I mean it's only a square, but you'll be able to notice it pointing different directions, I guess. Bullet.image angle can equal the same thing, so we can may as well copy those across as well. And then all I'm going to do is say bullet.speed equals 15, because its direction is already set um, to be our image angle. So now if we just give it a speed, it's going to fly um, forwards in the direction of our spaceship when we decided to fire the we decided to fire the bullet. Um, so that's all we need. Bullet equals, equals instance create and we general bullet. Right, so we create the bullet, we give it the direction of our player, um, we point the actual sprite in that same direction, and then we give it a speed of 15 so it'll fly away. Okay, um, And we already know that when our bullets go outside the room they're going to destroy themselves so we don't have to worry about them kind of like just traveling off into space forever and like generating an infinite number of bullets just by pressing space over and over. So now if we go ahead and run that, and I press space, you can see I'm shooting. And those bullets are flying off. And they destroy themselves whenever they go outside of the room. And that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you're learning a lot from the series. And in the next part, we're probably going to look at actually making asteroids for you guys to actually shoot at. All right. So then we'll have, I guess, something more of a like some actual gameplay going on. Okay. I'll see you guys then. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.